Hey guys, we are so glad you're here with us at Journey Church Online. If you're interested in getting more information about Journey Church, we have a messaging service where you can text the phrase, my welcome to 94,000. This will help you get to know a little bit more about Journey Church. Good morning. Happy New Year. Everybody doing good? Some of you are, it sounds like. Hey man, we're so glad you guys are here today. And uh, man, we're excited about what God has in store for 2021, right? If you're joining us online, thank you for joining us there and uh, just being a part of the service. And so let me just say, you know, a lot of us uh, look back at 2020 and uh, maybe we look at 2020 with like, thank God it's gone. Maybe you're ready for an upgrade. You know, you're ready for something new. I know a lot of people are looking forward to 2021, but I saw a pretty good post uh, this past week that a friend of mine posted about 2020. And what they were doing, they were kind of looking back and they were counting the blessings. They were looking back at the positives. And I thought, what, a, what an upgraded mentality to look back and go, you know, let me see what God has done. You know, they even lost a loved one in 2020, someone very dear to them. But they were counting their blessings. And they were looking into 2021 with hope and with faith, trusting that God had something new and something special that he was going to do in the year to come. And, and so I want us to, today we're kicking off a new series, and it's called Upgrade. And I know most of us in here like to get an upgrade, right? I mean, you like to... You know, go up to, get up to the counter and they say, hey, listen, uh, Mr. Mazingo, we're going to have to bump you up to uh, first class. You're like, sweet, right? I mean, don't y'all do that? Y'all get excited? I never get bumped up first class, by the way. But here's the thing is we love an upgrade. I mean, like a phone, a lot of you guys were looking for an upgrade this, probably this Christmas, right? I mean, that's what all the commercials are on TV about getting an upgrade, it seems like, even if you're an existing customer now. You know, and so it's one of those things where we want an upgrade. We want to kind of get the latest, the greatest, the, the best. We want to kind of be, feel like we've kind of got a good deal. Any guys in here like a good deal? Raise your hand. All right, so now are you one of those guys who whenever you get a good deal, you got to tell everybody about it? You want to tell everybody how good your deal was? And whenever they tell you that they've got a good deal, you want to kind of one-up their deal, right? You don't want to say, hey, well, that ain't nothing. I had a friend of mine used to, it didn't matter what story you told him, he always had to kind of one-up your story. And you could say, hey, man, this is what happened. And he would go, man, that ain't nothing. And I'd be like, really? You just, you just kind of let, let the air out of your, you know, your story. And, and so sometimes we like that. We, we want a good deal. We want to tell everybody how good our deal was. And so an upgrade is something that we all need. And so today we're going to be looking at upgrade. And the first one we're going to start with is a faith upgrade. I think 2020 had good, you know, had good ingredients to make it a, a year where we had to walk by faith, had to learn to live by faith. I mean, there's a lot of things that were out of our control. You know, we talked about that just a couple of weeks ago about how some of the things that are out of our control are things that can cause anxiety and fear in our minds and in our hearts and it can rob us of peace God's peace and, and so the thing is is too often what we do is we you know we go you know man we're going through tough times but God uses the challenges in life sometimes to raise the level of our faith and, and I think you know we're going to look today at a guy the father of faith Abraham we're going to look at him his name was Abram in the beginning and we're going to kind of look at him his life and kind of unpack a few things and follow it all the way from the Old Testament to New Testament so that you guys can see that God blesses faith and so what we've got to be willing to do is say, God, I need you to grow my faith. I need you to raise the bar in my life. I want to upgrade when it comes to faith. And, and so an upgrade, let's look at what an upgrade is here. Upgrade is an occurrence in which one thing is replaced by something better. Now, most of us like to get something better, right? Or newer or more valuable, etc. And so what we do is we, we, we want to, to kind of raise the bar. We feel like we're kind of stepping up in life. We're moving up. I can remember one time years ago, Laurie and I, we were doing a, a D now uh, in uh, a disciple now. If you guys don't know what that is, that's a youth ministry term where all these kids would get together in homes. You would teach them God's word and share the gospel. And, and then you would get, come back together at church. It was an incredible weekend, a powerful weekend. It was a great tool in student ministry. So we were doing one in Nashville, but it was also our anniversary. And so we were going to stay at the, uh, at the, uh, the hotel there in, at, at Opryland, the Opryland Hotel. We we're going to stay there. And so we were telling uh, the guy that we were going to stay one extra night or we were going to get there a night or I can't remember what it was. And, and anyway, he said, well, I've got a girl that works there. He said, maybe she can get you a room. And I said, man, that would be great. So we get there and we walk up to the counter and I said, hey, listen, it's Mike Mazingo. And, and uh, he goes, uh, Mr. Mazingo? And I was like, yeah. He goes, you must know some important people. I said, I guess so. I don't know. And he goes, uh, he goes all right. So he kind of starts checking around or whatever. Well, anyway, they hand us the key. And they take us down to the, uh, the presidential suite or the governor's suite, whatever it was. It was the best room in the whole hotel. You know, and so Lori and I were like, what? You know, we walk in and they've got this room over here. It's got a little area over here that goes a seating area. And all this. It's a big, it looked down this inside 
you know, room where it had all these plants and everything inside, like in the courtyard. Incredible room. And so we're like, we're wowed out. And like, we're freshly married, so we don't have any money. You know, it's like a stretch to even stay there. But to get the best room in the house was amazing. And you're talking about an upgrade. We got an upgrade. And, and so for us, we were like, man, we, we'll, this will never happen again. It'll never happen again. And uh, so every once in a while, we like those upgrades in life, right? But when it comes to our faith, we're not always ready for an upgrade. We're like, God, I'm good. God, I'm good. I'll just, I'll just kind of stay right here. And I'll just kind of be in cruise control. I'll just kind of coach. But that's not what God wants for us. God wants us to grow in our faith. God wants us to really to have to trust him more. And so I want us to look at Abram. And this is, this is a, a character in the Bible. Abraham gets an upgrade. And so he goes literally from one name to the next. God's going to change it. We'll see that as we walk through the scriptures today. And we're going to read a lot of text today. So kind of hang with me. But we're going to go back to Genesis here. And so look at Genesis, what it says. It says, the Lord had said to Abram, leave your native country your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you, a, make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and, and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. That includes us. That includes us. Verse 4, it says, So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him, and Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. So here's the thing. He's 75 years old. He's a little bit up there. But he's packing up everything and leaving. In verse 5 it says, He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he, he had taken into his household at Haran and headed to the land of Canaan. And, and so when we look at this, we go, you know what? He's, he's packing up at 75 years old. Most people at 75 are thinking, I'm settling down. I'm going to die in this house. You know what I'm saying? And you're, they're going to have to drag me out of here but he's going you know lord whatever you say god we're going to do it and so what i love here is abram he abram trusted god he trusted god and, and so you know we're, we're going to see that you know there's an upgrade that takes place in his life there's a change that takes place and he's already blessed with a lot of wealth he's already got a lot of livestock and stuff and so you know here he is he's packing up everything and it's not like it's just hey me and my wife you know, we don't have a son yet, but me and my wife, and we're going to pack up and go. But it's all these family members, and it's all this livestock. And so they're having to pack up and move like a caravan going through the, through the wilderness. And so for many of us, there's times where we feel like, you know, God is saying, hey, listen, I want you to take this step. I want you to trust me. I, I want you to trust me. And so, so, so if you'll just take this step, I'm going to bless you. And we're like, you know, God, I'm good. I'm good right here. I'll just kind of stay here. But whenever we take that step of faith, God begins to open the, the doors of blessings. And sometimes it's not financial blessings. I think everybody always goes, hey, what's the financial blessing? It's not always financial. Sometimes it's relational. Sometimes it's, you know, just peace of mind. Sometimes it's just ministry. God opens the door for ministry and opportunities that you didn't have before. And, and so here we see, you know, Abram is willing to trust God and he's willing to take a step. So Abram trusted God. And look at this next one here. Abram trusted God enough to obey. There are times that we would say, most of us in this room would say, you know, I trust God. But do you trust him enough to obey him? Do you trust him enough to, to give to uh, uh, something? Maybe, you know, God says, hey, listen, I want you to give, you know, this amount of money. Like with the big give, we ask God to, put, to, to move on people's hearts. And that everybody would give, you know, whatever God put on their heart. And that they would trust him. That's what we pray for, uh, for the big give this year. And, and so there's times, and I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where I'd go, God, you know, are you sure that's the right number? I'd be like, you know, I mean, I'm looking at our finances, and I'm thinking that's probably probably just me wanting to do that, God. It's probably not you wanting me to do that. It's me wanting to do that. And, uh, and there's times that God will go, no, Mike, that's what I want you to give. And I'm like, oh, I was hoping it was a, a lower number. You know, I don't know about y'all, but, I mean, there's times I'm like that. But here's the thing. God blesses faith. You can't outgive God. I'm just telling you, you can't outgive God. And, and so whenever we, we give two things, you know, we, we know that God is going to bless that. And here's the thing, whenever God says go, we've got to be willing to go because here's the thing, we know that God will bless that obedience. There's times that God may be calling you to go on a mission trip. And you think, well, I can't go, I won't be able to get off work, I won't be able to do this. And you'll have all these reasons and excuses, and a lot of times we're really good at coming up with excuses. But we'll give the reasons why we can't do what God is putting on our heart to do. But if we would go, God would bless that obedience. And, and so Abram trusted God enough to obey. Here's the next one. God blesses faith. We, we can't get away from that from the beginning of Scripture. We're in Genesis here. 
all the way to the end of the Bible, God blesses faith. And so what we often want to do is we want to earn things. We want to build up, you know, maybe enough credit with God that he would bless us or that he would use us. And here's the thing, God blesses faith. From the beginning, we're in Genesis. All the way to the end, it's about faith. It's not about knowledge. It's not about works. It's not about deeds. Because of the faith that we have in God, we do those things. We attend church not because, hey, we're trying to get right with God. We attend church so that we can celebrate God because he has made us right through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, there's some that may be here searching and wanting to go, hey, man, I want to know what it's like to have peace with God. I want to know what, it, what it's like to be saved. I want to know what it's like to you know, to know that I'm in right standing with God. And, and so here we see that you know, Abram, you know, he, he trusted God. He obeyed God. He moved. He packed up everything and moved. So what is God calling you to do? What has God put on your heart to do that you go, you know what, I know God has put this on my heart to do, but I just haven't trusted him enough to obey and it could be anything. It could be starting a business. It could be going on, on, to, on a mission trip. It could be going into the mission field. It could be surrendering to the ministry full time. I remember even with myself, I kept you know, saying, well, God, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll end up getting a degree in coaching. And what I'll do is I'll coach and I'll just kind of work as a minister kind of part time. And that was kind of my, my negotiating with God. And I was like, God, I'll just, I'll do that on the side. I'll kind of help out ministry wise on the side. And I can remember, you know, going into my senior year, the Lord's like, Mike, I didn't call you part-time. And I'm thinking, you know, God, I don't know if you can use me full-time. But I trusted him, and I, you know, I took that step. I said, God, here I am. I, I'm, I'm giving you my life. And so God may be calling you to a ministry. He may be calling you to start a ministry. Uh, I was on the phone yesterday with a guy, or actually I was, I was going hunting with a guy, and he was telling me about a friend of his and a, a ministry that, that this friend of theirs has and what, what they do to make a difference in the lives of people. And they're mentoring young families and young people. And I'm thinking, you know, that's awesome. They've, they've trusted God to take, to take a step and start a ministry. And so there's, there's not enough ministry going on. I'll just tell you that. There's need, there needs to be a whole lot more. So if God is putting something on your heart, maybe you ought to go sit down and have a conversation with somebody and find out, hey, is that a step I need to take? So God bless his faith. And then here's the next one. Abram was, was about the kingdom of God. This is what I love. He was about the kingdom of God. It was about not about what he wanted because he probably said, hey, I want to stay here. But it's like, God, I want to be about what you're about. God, I, I trust you. I lean into you. And we're going to see as we unpack this, and as we walk through these texts today, these scriptures today, you're going to see that he was about the kingdom of God. And, and I, I wanted to share this with you. You know, we, we do the big give every year. And so the big give is what we take in that goes towards missions and, and outreach that we do, you know, not only here in our backyard, but all t- to the ends of the earth. And, and so, you know, we ask everybody this year, hey, listen, I want you to pray about what God would have you you give and we know hey you know it's COVID you know we know that it's a a pandemic and we know that a lot of people have not been able to work and and so we were like you know God we just trust you we 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 trust you whatever it is that's what it is and so last year I think our 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 budget or what our offering came in to be was about seventy one thousand dollars and so up till a couple of weeks ago even I think last week we were at sixty thousand dollars and I'm like hey you know if that's what comes in you know I trust God on that and anyway this past week the total came in, it's $84,163.01. Is that not awesome? <laughs> on 2020, on 2020. And, and you know, so we trusted God. We trusted God for, a, for an offering, for a, for a big give offering that we'd be able to make a difference in the lives of church planners, missionaries, people that are out there that need to be reached with the gospel. They would give us an opportunity to do ministry, to buy Bibles and to put them in people's hands. And, and the people of God... Responded by faith, trusting him to give above and beyond so that we could, we could be a blessing to other churches, ministries, missions, all those things. So I'm just telling you, man, you know, we, I love being a part of a church that is about the kingdom of God. Not about just Journey Church, but about the kingdom of God. Now, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to throw this out there. We had another check come in this morning that may change that number. We'll see. But I'm just telling you, as a check came in this morning, we just got to make sure, hey, where does it go? Does it go to Big Give? Does it go to something else? And we're like, you know, God, you're just so faithful. And he is. He's, he's, I'm telling you, he's worthy to be trusted. And he's faithful. We may not be, but he is. And, and so to, just to have that number is amazing. And so Abram was about the kingdom of God. Journey Church, I'm telling you, is about the kingdom of God. We want to see people change, and we want to see lives, so, lives change. So let me just share this with you in Hebrews. So we get up to Hebrews. It says, it was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as an inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. He, he just packed up and it was like, God, you going to tell me when to stop? 
God, you going to tell me when I get there? God, you going to tell me when to end it? And that's what he was doing. He's like, God, I will move. I will go wherever you want me to go, and I'm trusting you to tell me when to, when to stop. And, and so he, was, he didn't even know where he was going, man. He just, he's just trusting God. It says, and even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith, for he was like a foreigner living in tents, and so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abram, Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. Don't miss that. Abram, Abram who would become Abraham, this is the New Testament, it's talking about it. It said, hey, listen, he was looking to something in the future. He was looking to something beyond. Let me just tell you this. When you give to the big give, when you give to ministry, when you invest in ministry, whenever you become part of the church doing ministry, you're investing in something that has eternal ramifications. You're investing in something that, listen, we never know what, uh, God, how God is going to use our testimony. We never know how God is going to use something that we've done to make a difference in someone's life. I was sharing with uh, a friend of ours who, uh, who gave their life to Christ this year. Their family was baptized, and, and we were talking about the video testimony that we did and how many people had seen that. I said, man, you never know who's going to watch that, and they're going to hear that. and said, man, that, that's what I want. And, th- and th- th- that seed has been sown into their life. And they're going to put their faith in Christ because of you having the courage to be willing to say, I want to tell someone how I came to know Christ. And then here's the thing, if we're willing to share our faith with someone, we're willing to tell someone how they can be saved. Again, we're like Abraham, we're looking, we're looking to something that is eternal. We're looking to the kingdom of God. And so I love this. God changes Abram's name and blesses him. He changed from Abram to Abraham. And, and so God changes us. You know, in the Bible, it says he'll give you a new name. He'll give you a new heart. He'll, he'll write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life when we put our faith in Christ. And so God changes us. I, I was sharing yesterday with someone, you know, as we were going down the road talking, I said, man, I'm not the guy I used to be. When I look back to how I used to be whenever I was in high school, man, I'm not that guy anymore. That guy, that man is dead. You know, and so God changes. He transforms us. And hopefully for you, when you look back, you don't go, man, I've always been the same way. I've always been the same way. Well, hopefully, if you're a believer, you go, man, that guy is dead. You know what? And, man, God is making me new. He is changing me and transforming me from the inside out. And I'm not okay with just being the same. I want to be changed. I want to be transformed. I want to be, I want to be a better version of me, not because of anything I bring to the table, but because of my faith in God and me allowing him to work in me, allowing him to use me, and me being willing to obey what he leads me to do. Look at this passage here. It says, when Abram was 99 years old. So this is in Genesis 17. It's a little bit further down in Genesis. So when Abram was 99 years old. So this is what we call the covenant promise here. So earlier we saw that he would bless him, right? So at 75, he gets an upgrade. 99, he gets, he gets a promise from God. It's 99 years old. The Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. He's telling him, hey, listen, live out your faith. And I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abram Abram fell face down on the ground. Then God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I'm changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham, for you will be the father of many nations. And I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations and kings will, will be among them. And I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. And I will give the entire land of Canaan where you now live as a foreigner to you and your descendants. And it will be their possessions forever. And I will be their God. God made Abraham a promise and he always keeps his promises. When you look at that passage there. You realize, you know what, God promised him, say, Abraham, this is, this is what I'm going to do. And, and, and we know, the, some of you guys know the rest of the story, not everybody does, but he promised him a son. That would come a little bit later. It would be a, a challenge, you know, to, to him and Sarah, go, you know, at this late in life, we're going to be having a baby. But here's the thing, is God made Abraham a promise, and he's always faithful. God keeps his promises. There are times whenever we go through years like 2020, we've got to look back and say, I'm leaning on the promises of God. I'm looking at the promises of God. You know, there, there are times that we've just got to go, you know, I've got to put my faith in God. Things around me don't seem to make sense. This is a crazy year. And so, God, I can't lean on some of the stuff around me, but, God, I can lean on you. You are faithful. 
and I trust you. I trust your promises. I trust your word. And, and so we've got to be willing to lean in that. And so we've got to keep his, he keeps his promises. We've got to lean into that. God blessed Abraham because of his faith. There it is again. We see in the passage, hey, it's because of his faith. It wasn't because, you know, of, of just, you know, maybe his, how he was born, you know, his, uh, you know, his lineage or anything like that. It was just, hey, this is a guy of faith. This is a guy of faith. And so God blessed his, blessed his faith. So God will bless our faith as well. And too often what we do is we, we lean into the wrong person. We lean into us. We, we have a tendency to want to trust ourselves. And I don't know about you, but, man, I let myself down too much. And, you, and we wonder, why in the world would I trust me over God? And here's the other thing. Why would I trust some people over God? People who maybe live against God. People who claim there is no God. Why would I lean into them and trust them more than the God of the universe who spoke all things into existence, who created me, who knit me together in the, in, in the secret place of my mother's womb, who, who called me out, who, who literally gave me a mission, and who has blessed our church and me in so many ways. Why would I trust anybody else other than him? But that's what we do sometimes. We trust everything but God. And so we've got to be willing to say, God, I, I trust you. And so God blesses Abraham because of his faith. Look at this next one. Abraham knew God was able to deliver you know, I don't put my faith in someone that I don't think can deliver. There's too many times I've been let down by people. I don't know about you, but I've been let down by people. I'll trust them to do something, and they let me down. But you know what? God has never let me down, ever, ever. He's never let me down. There's times he's led me down a different path. There's times he said, Mike, that's not where I want you get to be about. That's not where I want you going. That's not what, what, you know, what I had in plan. You may have planned that, but that's not my plans. But God has never let me down. Look at what it says here in Romans. Clearly, God's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants was based not on his obedience to God's law. See, a lot of times we think, hey, I just got to keep the law. I just got to keep all the rules. I got to follow all the guidelines, and then maybe I'll be good. But it was not based on his obedience to, to, to God's law, but on a right relationship with God that comes by faith. So Romans is pointing back to Abraham and saying, hey, listen, it wasn't about keeping the law. It's about faith. It's about trusting God. It's about leaning into him. If God's promise is only for those who obey the law, then faith is not necessary, and the promise is pointless. Remember the promise? He's going to be a father of many nations, a multitude of nations. And so it's, it's all about faith. For the law always brings punishment on those who try to obey it. The only way to avoid breaking the law is to have no law to break, because we all have a tendency to want to break the law. That's the flesh. We have that sinful nature. Look at this next one. So the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift. We just got through talking about Jesus being God's gift of peace to the world. We celebrated Christmas, right? And, and so it is, a, it is given as a free gift. And we are all certain to receive it, whether or not we live according to the law of Moses, and if we have, but if we have faith like Abraham's. So that's the key. For Abraham is the father of all who believe. When we used to sing the song, Father Abraham, anybody sing that? Father Abraham, right? Remember that one? All right, so he is the father of all these nations, but he, because he's the father of faith, he began to live by faith, and his influence has impacted all these nations. And you might say, well, is that just Israel? No, no, no. It's all who would believe by faith, not, not based on works, not on keeping the law, but say, you know what? It's by faith in, what, in God's plan, and God's plan was Jesus. God's gift was Jesus. Look at what it says here in Galatians. I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It is because you believe the message you heard about Christ. In the same way Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his what? What was it? It's his faith. It's not about keeping rules and regulations. Even though here's the thing, we want to honor God's word. We want to live according to it because of our faith in him, right? He keeps his promises to us. We want to honor his word. You know, and, and so... It's saying, hey, listen, God counted him as righteous because of his faith. The real children of Abraham, then, are those who put their faith in who? In God. So the real children of Abraham. Because understand, when Jesus was teaching, a lot of the Israelites would say, hey, we're children of Abraham. He's like, hey, listen, you misunderstand what that's about. It's about those who put their faith in God. Those are the ch real children of, of Abraham. What's more, the Scriptures look forward to this time. When God would declare the Gentiles to be righteous because of their faith. God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago when he said, all nations will be blessed through you. See, again, Abraham was what? He was looking to the future. He was looking to those things that are eternal. He was looking to God's plan. 
And he was, he was saying, God, I want to be about what you are about, God. It's not about me. God, I want it to be about you. And so he was, he was proclaiming it. So all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. And so this is important for us to understand. Look at this next one here. Trusting God's gift is an upgrade over trying to earn salvation. See, there's many times that we try to earn salvation. And I don't know about you, but there's been a lot of times whenever I would negotiate with God and I'd be like, God, I'm going to do this this year. You know, a lot of people do New Year's resolutions. And they think, well, I'll start doing this, or I'll start doing this, or I'm going to be a better person, or I'm going to start tithing, or I'm going to start giving, or I'm going to start doing, and, and we think, well, maybe God will love me more. God loves you as much as he's ever going to love you right now. He loves you. He wants a relationship with you. And, and so trusting God is a gift. You know, it's, it's, it's what we do. Trusting God, we, we got to, you know, God, I trust your gift. So trusting God's gift is an upgrade over trying to earn salvation. I don't know about you, but man, I like, I like challenges and I like goals, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes I can get frustrated when I can't reach that goal. I can't accomplish what that, I can't beat that, whatever it might be, that challenge. And it's kind of deflating. But the amazing thing about salvation is it's not based on how good I can be. It's based on how good Jesus was. It's not based on me earning it and getting there and crawling and clawing until I get there. But it's about receiving the gift of salvation. Now, some, for some of us, we feel like, you know, that makes it too easy. God's desire is that all men would be saved, that everyone would have a way to be in right standing with God. And so maybe today for, for you, maybe it's time to say, you know what? Man, I need a faith upgrade. I need to put my faith in Christ. And quit trying to earn this gift. And instead, I want to receive the gift of salvation. I want to trust God. In 2021, let me tell you, it could be a great year of trusting God. Maybe 2020 gave us all the reasons, but maybe we didn't do it. Maybe we were worried, we were anxious, we were afraid. And even now, you know, there's things that are spiking all around us. We go, you know, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, I'm, I'm in fear. But here's the thing is we've got to be wise, but, man, we've got to trust God. Be wise, but trust God. And we've got to be willing to say, God, help me to make the, the wise decision. God, but I want, to, I want to trust you. Trusting God is an upgrade over trusting ourselves. I promise you. He's way better to trust in than to trust in ourselves, right? If you know yourself very well at all, you know, you know what, man, I probably wouldn't put a ton of trust in me. I would put it in God. I would put it in Jesus Christ. I would put it in the Son. I would put it in the Holy Spirit. I would put it in the things of God. I will trust Him over anything that I bring to the table. I, I can remember whenever you know, I was dealing with me about ministry, I was like, God, I don't have anything to bring to the table. I don't even like getting up in front of people. God, what are you going to, how would you use me? You know, and so... I'm, I, I'm just telling you, just trust Him. Trust Him. And I think for many of us, we know that we should trust Him, but do we trust Him enough to obey Him? We trust Him enough to obey Him. That's the next question. Trusting God is the key. It's trusting God. It's trusting God's plan of salvation, Jesus. Jesus would leave heaven. He would come to earth. He would literally walk among people. He would heal the lame. He would heal the blind. He would do incredible miracles. He would feed 5,000 people with just a few fishes and loaves. But the main thing he did was he went to the cross. And he chose to. He laid down his life. He was obedient to the Father. He models that for us. And he goes and he lays down his life. And as these Roman soldiers are driving nails into his hands and his feet, you know, he's going, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They stand him up. They hang him on this cross. He bleeds out his precious blood. And, and we go, you know, man, I don't understand that. But it goes back to you've got to trust God that God says, hey, that blood sacrifice has to take place. Something has to wash away the sins of the world. And only the perfect lamb could do that. And so when we put our faith in Christ, when we, when we put our, our trust in who Jesus is, and here's the thing, we begin to realize, you know what? God knows how. God knows best. And so Jesus would be, he would, he would die there on that cross for us. He would be laid in a borrowed tomb. He would be resurrected by the power of God. And even the disciples, if you'll remember, they were struggling with faith. They were struggling with trusting the message that they had heard. So I get that we all wrestle with, you know, God, how do you do that? How do you make all things new? How do you make all things right? Through Jesus going to the cross, and goes back to, we have to trust him. We have to trust him. 
And so maybe for you today, it's finally, you know what, I'm going to trust Him. I'm going to trust God. Maybe this year, you say, you know what, 2021 is going to be the year that I trust God. When He says go, I'm going. When He says move, I'm moving. When He says do, I'm doing. Whatever it might be, I'm going to trust God this year. I'm going to make sure it's Him. But here's the thing, I'm trusting Him. And I'm not going to put my trust in me. I'm going to trust Him. And I'm going to trust Him to use me for great things. So here's some next steps. Some next steps. I'll put my trust in God and His promise. I'll put my trust in God and His promise. God promises us that He will will save us, that He will redeem us, that He will change us, that He will make us new. And so I'm going to put my trust in Him. So maybe for you today, or maybe you're watching online, you've never put your faith in Christ. You've never received Jesus Christ for salvation. You go, you know what? Today is the day that I trust Him. I can't figure everything out. Some of it's going to take faith. And so maybe for you today, you say, you know what, I'm going to trust Jesus for salvation. I'm going to put my faith in Him. I'm going to trust Him. I'm going to trust God to show me how to grow my business. I'm going to trust God to lead me to the right job. I'm going to trust God if He calls me to missions, I'm going. If He calls me to a mission trip, I'm going. If He calls me to ministry, I'm going. And so maybe for you today, it's the day that you finally say, you know what, I trust Him. I trust Him and I trust His promises. Look at this next one. I will live by faith and trust God's Word. I'll look into His Word. I'll know His Word. Maybe you say, you know what, I'm going to start reading God's Word just a little bit every day. But the more that I read, the more that I trust. The more that I read, the more that I grow. The more that I read, the more that I understand how much He loves us and how His plan is perfect. So I'm not just going to walk through life just wondering, I'm going to have a guide. I'm going to have God's Word in my life. I'm going to read His Word. I'm going to obey His Word. And I'm going to live in a way that honors Him. And so as we do those things, man, it it begins to open up our faith and grow our faith. I'll trust God enough to obey. Some of you, that you need to hear that today. I don't question that you trust God, but do you trust Him enough to obey? To take a step, to step out, to attempt the impossible. A lot of times I think what we do is we set goals, we don't set them high enough. Sometimes we pray, we don't pray big enough. And maybe today, God is saying to you, I want you to trust me enough to go big and to go. I want to ask you, if you will, just to bow your heads and close your eyes. And if you're watching online, you can do that right there, you know, sitting on the couch. Or if you want to get down by a coffee table. And I just want to encourage you just to really trust God. God, what, God, God, what is it that you want me to do? What is it that you want me to do? There may be some in the room, maybe some of you out there that are watching that you've never put your faith in Christ. You've been trying to figure this whole plan out. You've been trying to figure out, you know, uh, it's got to make sense to me. And it's not about sense sometimes, it's about trust, it's about faith. And so maybe for you, you're, you're going, you know, God, for the first time in my life, I realize it's about faith. And I want to I wanna receive Jesus for salvation. I want Jesus to come and live within me. I want him to be my leader, my Lord, my Savior. I trust Him. God, I trust You for saving me, for forgiving me. And and so, God, I just ask You to to come into my life, to change me forever. There may be some of you in the room that have made that decision today. Man, we want to know about that. If you're online, you can text us and just text my decision, 94,000. We want to know. If you're here in the room, man, fill out a card. We would love to know. We want to be able to pray with you. We want to be able to put a Bible in your hand. Now, think back to the big gift. I trust that God will give us wisdom about how to use that for His kingdom and for His purposes. Maybe it's to send a missionary somewhere. Maybe it's to support a new ministry. So whatever God is putting on your heart, you would say, you know what, God? I trust you enough to obey you. I trust you enough to surrender. Father, I thank you for meeting with us today. And Lord, I pray if there's anybody in this room, that God, that they put their faith in you, that they would let us know. If there's anybody online, God, that have put their faith in you for salvation, I pray they would let us know. God, we just want to celebrate. God, we want to celebrate a life going from death unto life. We want to celebrate a life being changed, a life being transformed. We want to celebrate the promise, God, of your gift. God, that you are, you're expanding your kingdom. And God, that we, we get to celebrate that. God, you trusted us with your message. You trusted us with this mission. And so, God, I pray that we would trust you enough to be faithful and to go forward doing everything we can to reach as many as possible with the good news 
of your gift, your son, Jesus Christ. So, Father, thank you for a new year. Thank you for 2021. Thank you for 2020 and all that we learned there. And, and God, I pray that you would use us as your vessel as we move into this, this new year in a new way. New opportunities, new beginnings. Thanks for such an incredible message, Pastor Mike. If you just made a decision to follow Christ, we want you to know it's the greatest decision you have ever made. And we want to help you with your next steps. If you'll text the phrase, my decision, to the number 94,000, we would love to help you as you began this journey with Christ. Now we're going to bring our tithes and offering to God. I want to encourage you to trust God completely in this area of your life. And we do that through our giving. Now we've made this super simple. You should see a link on the screen and in the comment section to the Journey Church Giving page. There you can return God's tithe and your offering. If you need help learning how to give online, we have several videos on our YouTube page. Your giving allows us to continue to make an increasing impact for the gospel. And so take that step right now and allow God to bless your obedience.